To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, and what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel Keller and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simu. Happy Friday to you all. Hope you're all having a great day. If you're based in London, it is an absolute scorcher today. Do I look a little bit flustered, a little bit hot? Yes, because I've been working really hard in the garden today. I've cleared the garden. I've tidied it all up. I've made it look spick and span. The wife is over the moon with the effort that I've put in today. I even went and got a gazebo and put it up. It's not the greatest gazebo, I have to say. Um, It looks like it's going to get blown away probably um, over the next few days uh, if the weather turns a little bit at some point. But it's been a productive day, a tiring day. Um, I've been sort of in and out of football Twitter or football X as it's now known, trying to keep tabs on anything that may or may not be happening. And in truth, there isn't really a great deal in terms of concrete news when it comes to Arsenal today. We haven't had any real clear update on Ricardo Calafiori other than uh, the CEO of Bologna being filmed as he got into a car, uh, just simply saying no news. So we don't know that there's been any progress on that. Um, We talked yesterday quite a bit about Nico Williams and the fact that he's more than likely going to join Barcelona this summer, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, in terms of like, big, big news and and big, big movement. We haven't really had anything um, over the last couple of days. And I understand from sort of reading on social media and looking at people's comments that some people are starting to get a little bit frustrated by that. As I said on yesterday's episode, there's no need. There's no need to be um, sort of angry or agitated by the fact that we haven't done a great deal of business just yet. It is still pretty early on in the window, as I keep saying to everybody, we are. you know, very much in the stages just after the European Championships. And I said all along that if you thought significant business was going to happen pre the Championships, you'd probably end up being disappointed. And that's certainly been the case over the last sort of um, the last sort of month or so. The finals are finished now. But a lot of the players, as I said yesterday, that we are looking at, that other big clubs are looking at, are on holiday. You know, those that went the distance in the Euros in particular are on holiday. Those that went only as far as sort of the end of the group stages are also only just returning back to sort of training camps and stuff now as well. So there's no need to stress. There's no need to panic, honestly. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens over the coming weeks, but just just chill, you know, take it easy. We know that Arsenal will have had their targets in place um, much earlier. We heard them talking about the planning for this summer window sort of midway through last season. So, Rest assured that there has been discussions, there have been conversations and targets, I'm sure, have been identified. We can't even guarantee that the targets that we're talking about on these episodes sort of every day are the targets that Arsenal have in mind, which is why you need to sometimes keep a little bit of a distance from transfer rumours because there's a world in which you can get sucked in by them. You can become really invested in the idea of signing a particular player when actually that was never your club's intention and where you're sitting there going, why is it bloody taking so long? Actually, the reason it was taking so long was because your club were never really seriously in on that or trying to make that happen. But yeah, anyway, let's get into today's first story. We're going to begin with a story concerning uh, young Chido Obi Martin, a youngster who scored a bucket load of goals for Arsenal in youth team football over the last couple of seasons. It's been linked with a move away uh, because, of course, he is desperate to go somewhere and play somewhere where there's a clear pathway through to the first team. For Chido Obi Martin to be considering his future away from Arsenal, he obviously thinks that Um, you know, the pathway isn't quite as clear as he would like it to be. We know that Arsenal have done a lot of work behind the scenes to try and convince him that there is 
a place for him at Arsenal, um, that he, uh, you know, he is someone that they have in their plans for the future, et cetera, et cetera. They've offered him a scholarship um, because, of course, at his age, Arsenal are unable to offer him a, a professional contract. And one of the things that's been said quite a bit uh, about a potential move away is that a move to the continent could be on the cards, largely because those clubs on the continent have the power to offer you a professional contract at a younger age. They can offer you a professional contract that's 16 years old. In England, they need to wait until the player turns 17. And that was why Dortmund were being linked and Bayern were being linked because, of course, those clubs over in Germany have the, the capability of, uh, of doing that. According to this report from the Academy Scoop, Chido Obi Martin visited Manchester United's Carrington training ground earlier this week to discuss a potential move to the club. The player is, of course, yet to agree scholarship terms with Arsenal. I've got no problem with a young lad going and looking around and trying to assess his options and trying to get a greater understanding of what's out there for him in order to then make a more informed decision when it comes to either staying with Arsenal or moving on elsewhere. The idea, though, that Manchester United is a healthier place to be for a young player finding his way is just mad to me. I know that people will say Arteta doesn't rotate much and there are certain players that don't get enough minutes and don't get enough opportunities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Arsenal are competing right at the top and have some really, really talented players that you would be learning from on a daily basis. And you know what? We talk about Arsenal's squad being stacked with talents and really important, strong players. But do you know what Arsenal don't have? They don't have that cold, bloody killer in front of goal. And until they sign one, which I don't think they will, by the way, this summer, then that's that's your aim if you're that young lad. That's what you're aiming to be. You're aiming to provide an internal solution to a problem that Mikel Arteta and Arsenal clearly have. That's your pathway. So, look, if Chido Obi Martin decides that actually he's going to go elsewhere, fine. You know, that's that's his prerogative. It's up to him. But the idea that Manchester United is a better place makes no sense to me. So if he moves away, fine. I wish him the best of luck. But if he ends up joining Manchester United, I will be sitting here saying, what are you doing, lad? Like, is that really the move that's going to open the pathway for you? I mean, the problem with Manchester United as well, I know everyone talks about their new structure and all the rest of it. But they've still got Eric Ten Hag in charge. He might not be in charge six months down the line. People keep talking about the great business that they're doing at the moment. Lenny Euro. Um, I heard lots of Manchester United fans saying yesterday, we beat Real Madrid to Lenny Euro. No, you didn't. Lenny Euro wanted to join Real Madrid. The problem was that Real Madrid wouldn't pay anywhere near what Manchester United would pay. And as a result of that, he's had to settle for a move to Manchester United because that best suits his club in terms of the finances. If Real Madrid and Manchester United went in with the same amount of money, there's no way that Lenny Euro chooses Manchester United. He's chosen them because he's kind of been forced down that path. And Manchester United are ironically doing the thing that has got them into this mess in the first place, which is overpaying for players that there's no guarantee are going to be successful. He's been compared from some of the things I've read to William Saliba. William Saliba needed a good couple of years out on loan to, to man up and become the player that he is today. And I think that that could be the case with someone like Lenny Euro. But when you go and pump in the kind of money into a deal that Manchester United are said to be pumping in to bring him to your club, you can't then send him out on loan. People will ask questions. 30 million we spent on Saliba was a lot of money. And I remember at the time people saying, well, if you just spent 30 million on a centre-back, why the hell are you loaning him out? And, you know, a lot of us agreed with that at the time. But in hindsight, we've seen that obviously that move worked really, really well. I've digressed a little bit, but my point is here is that Manchester United have a long way to go, in my opinion, before they'll prove to people that they have changed and that they're moving in the right direction. And therefore, I cannot understand why a young lad like this, who's in a really good position at Arsenal, would want to join a basket case of a football club. And they are that until proven otherwise. So, yeah, that's my my thoughts on that. Lenny Euro, I'd be sad to see... Uh, Lenny Euro, Chido Obi Martin, I should say. I'd be sad to see him go. Um, but obviously, he's an ambitious young man with hopes and aspirations of becoming a senior player sooner rather than later. He's clearly got the talent. Uh, where he'll end up, I don't know, but I'd personally like to see us keep him. 
Let's talk a little bit about Arsenal's midfield. Lots of uh, reports, lots of rumours. We've heard uh, the Mikel Marino stuff uh, quite a bit over the last few days. And Team News and Tix has been talking on Charles Watts' uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Team News and Tix actually saw me, apparently, um, when we were in Germany. And he told a few people that um, he was sitting on the train sort of like opposite me. But he didn't say hello, um, which is a shame. Uh, but anyway... He says that with Declan Rice, Arsenal prefer him as a number eight because they feel that he does both jobs, a six and an eight at the same time. Arsenal would prefer to bring in a six, but it's a harder market. So if they have to bring in an eight, they will sign an eight instead. So their preference, according to this, is to bring in that slightly deeper lying midfield player. But unfortunately, at the minute, they it, well, as far as what Team News and Ticks is saying, there's no certainty in any real target that they've... There's nobody that they look at and say he's the guy is basically what I wanted to say there. I think we can all agree that Rice is more effective as an eight. I think Rice playing as a six at the Euros only kind of, um, you know, reinforced that opinion and that perspective and that point of view. And I think we'll get the best out of Declan Rice playing as an eight. You saw his goal return sort of, you know, come out quite well given sort of what he'd managed in his career previously he was producing assists largely from set pieces with a really good delivery so yeah I do see Declan Rice as a more advanced player so does this surprise me no uh, it's kind of what we thought is kind of uh, in line with uh, with what we've been saying over the course of the summer so far According to Fabrizio Romano, Crystal Palace are preparing a bid for Emile Smith-Rowe with the player being somebody that the manager, Oli Glasner, really wants to sign this summer. We talked the other day about what a good move Fulham could be for Emile Smith-Rowe. Crystal Palace is a good move too, you know. Um, I think that playing at Selhurst Park is, is really quite something. He is from Croydon. Um, they called him... Was people calling him the Croydon De Bruyne at one point or something like that? Um, anyway, he's from Croydon, as far as I'm aware, uh, which means that it's a club that he will be very familiar with. I'm sure growing up, a lot of his friends would have supported uh, Crystal Palace. I spent some time in my childhood living in Croydon as well. And Crystal Palace obviously has a big fan base there because it's just down the road. Uh, Crystal Palace coming in is a good thing for Arsenal because it means that there's some competition for his signature, which means that Arsenal can kind of push back a little bit more, knowing there's a couple of options, and try and pit those two teams against each other, try and create something of a bidding war. I don't think it's the kind of situation that is going to get out of hand in terms of the price. I think 30 to 35 million will probably do it. Um, I don't know what the makeup of these offers are going to look like. Is there going to be add-ons? Is there going to be bonuses? Is it going to be over installments? That's for the money men to kind of decide and, and figure out between them. But having another club in the mix for Emile Smith-Rowe, I think, is a good thing. And um, and he's got some thinking to do because, you know, we've heard some other sort of reports come out today suggesting that actually Mikel Arteta isn't really that keen on selling Emile Smith-Rowe. And it would have to be a very good offer to, to tempt Arsenal into doing that. He's happy for him to stay. He's happy for him to fight for his place. But Emile Smith-Rowe has some thinking to do because does he want to be a bit part player again? Because my gut feeling at the moment is that that's exactly what it'll be going into a new season. Or does he want to go and be the big fish in a smaller pond and get his career essentially if he can perform well and stay fit, which has always been his biggest problem? Does he want to get his career back on track that way? I think him moving on is probably best for him. Um, from a selfish Arsenal perspective, I wouldn't mind if he stayed. But I also think that at a time where we probably need to move some players out, if we could get 30, 35 million pounds, given how well we've done without Emil Smith Rowe really playing any significant role over the last two years, I think we'd be stupid not to take it. That's just uh, my opinion. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And our final and headline story is with regards to a name that we've heard linked time and time again over the years, Pedro Neto. According to Fraser Fletcher, Arsenal have held preliminary talks with Pedro Neto's agent this week, and the player has made it clear that he is prioritising a move to Arsenal. The club view Neto as a potentially great addition to their forward line and have been told that £50 million would secure the deal. 
when I said earlier on in the pod, don't get your hopes up, don't get attached to certain um, players that are being linked with us. The Pedro Neto thing is is the best possible example I could come up with for this because over the last two, three seasons, we've had Neto to Arsenal, Neto to Arsenal, Neto to Arsenal. And people have got really kind of invested in the idea of Pedro Neto becoming an Arsenal player. And the truth is we've never even been close to it. All we've ever heard is that Arsenal admire him, Arsenal admire him, Arsenal quite like him. But has that developed into something more this time around? According to Fraser Fletcher, those talks with the player's agent have taken place. But they're only preliminary talks and there's no mention of any talks between Arsenal and Wolverhampton Wanderers. So that £50 million price point um, that has been communicated through the agents to Arsenal is something that's come from the agent rather than from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, you know, and, and we're going to have to see how this develops. I've always said the same thing about Pedro Neto. On his day, he's a fine, fine footballer. More effective from the right-hand side, um, which is what we're lacking in terms of squad depth. I know we've got Bukayo Saka there, but we always talk about having Trossard and uh, Martinelli on the left and the likes of, you know, even Emil Smith-Rowe at the moment who could play from that left-hand side if you really wanted him to. He'd do it in a slightly different way, but obviously it's a position that he's familiar with and has played in the past. And one he's better suited to, in my opinion, than playing as a left eight. But on the right-hand side, we've always lacked that cover um, for Bukayo Saka. So Pedro Neto, left-footed player, would cut in off that right-hand side. It would work quite well, wouldn't it? £50 million is a lot of money, though, to spend on a squad player. Um, you know, I suspect that given the competitions we're going to be in and the amount of games, he would be more than your bog-standard squad player in that he'd probably get a lot more minutes than your squad player at other clubs, clubs lower down the table, etc. So maybe that kind of justifies going as far as £50 million. But my red flag with Pedro Neto has always been the injury record. And we've got a few players in that squad whose injury records we're always bemoaning. So we'd be taking a bit of a gamble and a bit of a risk in that sense. Um, and I, I'd imagine as a consequence of that, Arsenal would probably be hoping to pay significantly less for Pedro Neto. But he is being linked. That is something that is going around at the moment. Um, it's one to keep an eye on, but it's one to protect your feelings uh, from, I would say, at this stage. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. You know the drill by now. Check us out on Patreon as well. And we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the pod. Until then, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Happy weekend all the rest of it. Enjoy the sunshine. Goodbye.